Hi, this is PR Frank, and today we're going to take a look at more HTML link techniques. We're going to take a look at how to make a link for an email and a link for an anchor, which would jump to another part of a page or even another part of another page, and how to make image links and image map links. So here we go. So first of all, this is what we left off with in the last tutorial. And uh, I just need to clean up the ugliness here that we left behind. So this red on green is just not cutting it. So I'm going to go back to my styles and um, change that to something, uh, let's see, like uh, chocolate. And um, it's okay. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave the chocolate in the aside. Um, and we no longer want to call it red text. Let's just call it chocolate text. It doesn't really matter what we call it. We can keep it red text. It'll still be chocolate or whatever we call it. But over here, we're not going to use this for our header at all. And then we will make sure that we change this one to chocolate text. All right, so that looks better. Let's also take the ugly uh, dashed line off of there and we'll make it solid. So if we go down to our side and we see we have dashed We'll make that solid. There, that's nice. All right, so now we're ready to proceed. So the way that uh, email links work, they are uh, pretty simple. I'll go down into my footer, and let's say that I want to make a link out of uh, my name. Uh, it's probably better to actually make a link out of my actual email, okay? So right here, I'll put email, and I'll put pr.frank at prfrank.com. We're going to use our anchor tag again. Okay. We're going to put the closing anchor tag at the end of the email. So this is the part that will turn into a link. And inside the href, instead of entering a website or something, we're just going to type in mail to, it's all one word, and we actually put the email address in there again. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to, if, if someone, if this were in a web page, the user would click it and then it would launch their default email program. So I know many of us use email on the web these days. And so that doesn't really work for using email on the web because it'll just launch, you know, mail, your mail program or Outlook or whatever you have. Uh, so you can still put this in your page. And people that have tried to click on an email link before and it just launches their mail program know better. And it, it, this part, making a link, my actual email address, makes it easy to just copy and paste. So let's go see how that looks. If I scroll into the footer, you can see there's an email link down there, but it's blue and it's underlined and it doesn't really work. So what I need to do is I actually need to code it so that it shows up a little differently. So here we go. Back to our styles. If I wanted to change the anchor, what I need to do is I need to say, okay, anything in the footer that is surrounded by an anchor, so far the only thing surrounded by an anchor in my footer is that email link, so this is going to work so far. I want to change the color of that text to, um, how about this Alice blue, that should show up. Okay, and I also want to kind of take out the underline, sometimes I don't, I don't like the underline on there. So I can just say text, decoration, none. And I'll see how it looks. So now it's a, it's a slightly different color. When I hover it, you can see that goes on there. Let me just show you what happens when I click on it. It's going to launch my mail program that I never use. See, it's asking me to set it up. I can still copy paste it with no problem just by selecting it, copy and paste it into whatever email uh, in my browser that I want to use. All right. So that's email links. The other kind of link we have is it sometimes, um, and you can see this a lot on Wikipedia, where you click on a link and you jump down the page to whatever you want to read. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of content to be jumping down the page to, but I could just add a whole bunch more content to that. So let me just take these three paragraphs and repeat them so we have a lot of content. All right, so now if I save and refresh this, you see I have a lot of content to scroll down to. And I want to scroll down to this last paragraph, okay? The way we do it is simply by using 
an ID. Now we used IDs in another lesson and IDs can be used to jump to different parts of a page. What we need to do is we need to go down all the way to that last paragraph and inside of that last paragraph's opening P tag, we need to put an ID, right? ID equals last paragraph. We can call it whatever we want. Okay. And what we do is then we use at the top of the page, we use this ID in a link and an anchor tag to jump down to this ID of last paragraph. And here's how that works. So uh, what we'll do is we'll find our um, one of our opening paragraphs here. And maybe at the end of that opening paragraph, we'll put an anchor tag. Inside of that, it's going to be href equals, remember an ID starts with a hashtag, so we have hashtag last paragraph. Okay, and inside of the two anchor tags, we're going to write some text that we can click on, like jump to last paragraph. So now when we click on last paragraph, it will look at the href and just jump to the wherever it finds an ID called last paragraph, which is right here. So let's see how that works and save it. I'm going to come to the top of our page, you see it says jump to last paragraph, boom, the page jumps down. So now it can see the last paragraph. Now you can also jump to a place on another page. So let's open one of our other pages, like the about page. So here we are our about page. Uh, let's jump to the second paragraph on that page. So if we go to the second paragraph in that article, here it is. And inside we put an in, uh, ID equal to um, second paragraph. And really I can call it anything I want. So now what I do is I go back to my index and up here where I had the first link, all right, let me, let me make it easy and put that on the next line so we can see it. Put this down here. We're gonna make another anchor tag. We are gonna put the href equal to, now we have to tell it to go to the about page and then right next to the HTML, no space or anything inside the quotation marks, hashtag second paragraph. Okay, so now it's gonna jump to, it's gonna go to about, and it's going to jump to the second paragraph on that page. Then in here, we're going to put uh, jump to second paragraph on about page, right? So we know what we're going to. So we save that, we come back to our index page, we click that, and now it goes to our about page to the second paragraph. Now, of course, we can't tell that it jumps to the second paragraph, but it, it does. So that's how that works. It's just an ID and you use the href to indicate which ID you want to jump to and it'll, it'll jump all around the site. Now images, images are really easy to use for clickable things because people want to click on images. Your eyes are drawn to them. So let's put an image on our index page. Let's put this image in our header. I think that'll finally look good to have something in our header besides just the word header. All right, so inside the header, under the H1, we're gonna put an image of a coffee cup that I've already downloaded. So I'm gonna to go to um, IMG SRC, which is source. And I've made a separate folder for my images. So if I click that, you can see there's a coffee cup PNG right there. Alt equals coffee cup. Okay, so there's a simple image. If I save and refresh, you can see now there's a picture of a coffee cup in my header. If I want to make that into a link, I just have to surround it with something that's a link. I put an anchor element. I make sure that the closing anchor tag is at the end of the entire image. So this image is contained within my two anchors, href equals, and then I decide where I want to go. Well, one of my favorite coffee shops around here is press. So let's see, press coffee. Here's the website. Oh, it's insecure, but I'll copy that. I'll come back to my brackets. I'll paste the URL in there. So it's an absolute link. It's got everything. It's got the HTTP. The reason it's not secure is because it's not HTTPS. Maybe I'll have to tell them about that and get a free cup of coffee. Then um, I also need to say that I want it to um, 
have a target of another tab. I don't, I want to leave my website. I want it to open it in another tab. So target equals blank. So save that. I come back to this and you'll notice now when I hover that image, it turns into a little finger. I click it and it goes to Press Dayton's website. Very good. The other thing we might want to do is we might want to make an image map. Now an image map targets particular pixels in an, in an image that you click on. So if I don't want the whole image to be clickable, let's say I just want the saucer and the cup to be clickable, then I can make a, an image map to go with that. So let me take you over to W3Schools and show you how that works really quick. So if you search image maps, it tells you all about image maps. And uh, here's an image that has several image maps in it. It's got an image map for the computer. And you can see when I hover the computer, it's a rectangular map. If I go outside of it, it's not linkable. The phone is also an image map and the coffee cup is an image map, just like we're going to make our coffee cup an image map. This one is made out of a circle and these two are made out of rectangles. And as you can see in the code here, it's made up of two different things. You start with an image element. And it's got your source and your alt, but it also has a brand new attribute called use map. And as you can see, it uses that hashtag to say, hey, this is what the map is called. So we're going to use map called hashtag work map. Then we use another element we haven't used yet called the map element. And the map element has an attribute called name. And that's set equal to whatever your use map was equal to in your image element. Then you can see in this map, there are three areas to find. They use the area element and it's got different attributes. It's got what kind of shape you want. It's got four coordinates. It's got an alt attribute because it really is an image, like a, an embedded image inside of an image. So you have to use an alt um, attribute there. And it's got an href to say, hey, then where do I want to go for this? Um, so the way that coordinates work is if you got a rectangle, the first two coordinates are like the top left hand corner of your image. So that's 34 means it's 34 pixels from the left side, 44 pixels from the top of that image. So that defines the top left hand corner. The second two are the X, Y coordinates for the bottom right hand corner. So 270 pixels from the left on the X axis and 350 pixels from down the Y axis. So that's how coordinates work for a rectangle. If you have a circle, it basically says, all right, where is the center of this circle? And it is 337 pixels from the left and 300 from the top. Okay, so let's try it out. Now, it is difficult to estimate where these pixels are. So what everybody does now is they just use an image map generator, which is a lot easier than trying to figure out all these pixel coordinates by trial and error, or by knowing the exact dimensions of your document and doing a bunch of math. So what we can do is we can just search the web for image map. There it is, image map generator. I'm just going to go to the first one. The way this one works is I select an image from my PC or I can load it from a website, but I'm going to select it from my PC because that's where it is. Here it is. It loads it in here. So. I'm going to choose from the drop down box what shape I want. I want a circle. And the way this works is I find the center of that circle and then I find the outside. And then it knows what the radius is. So it's not perfect, but there it is. Uh, I can also define right here in for this image map generator, I can define what the link is. So I can put the press coffee in there. I can type in for my title, press coffee, which becomes my alt attribute. And for the target, I want it to be blank. So it's going to generate all the code for me. I can even do a new area if I wanted to. So I'm going to click show me the code. And as you can see, it's generated a comment, an image with the source and the map, which it's just calling image map and a map element using that same image map name in the area element, which has a target of blank an alt of press coffee that I typed in also a title attribute, which has been deprecated or it's really not used any longer in this might uh, pull up a flag when you validate but uh, you can include the title as well as the alt if you like and finally the href where are we going to go once this is clicked so I can just copy all that code come back to my brackets and right here inside of my header 
I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Now I no longer need, it's kind of messy, let me dress that up a little bit. Now I no longer need this other anchor here. Because that's just the anchor of the whole image, so I'll just delete that out of there. But I have everything that's generated for me. I can keep it as is, um, or I can change my image map name, it doesn't really matter. I'll just keep it the same, it's easy. Save. I'll come back over to my document and my image is missing. Well, that's because this image is in another folder. So let me fix that really quick. Images, there it is. So now it should work. There we go. So when I hover this image now, all this table doesn't, uh, doesn't give me a little finger pointer, but if I hover any part of that coffee cup in the saucer, it turns into a pointer, which I can click, opens in a new tab, and goes to that website. I hope this was helpful for understanding uh, some more ways to use links. We used email links. We used um, anchors or bookmarks to jump different parts of a page or different parts to another page. Image links and image maps. Have a good day.